things started. So with that, Bert and our uh, wonderful partners, Adele, take it over. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here with the group today and uh, hoping to, to, that everyone gets a, you know, something of value out of this conversation and uh, looking forward to the talk today. And so like you said, I've um, been with Dell for a little over 18 years. I've been in and around the small business organization uh, throughout my entire career. And I think uh, like many of the small business owners, we're going through a variety of challenges on the Dell side as well. So hopefully, again, I've got some insights and helpful tips and some dialogue that can help everybody uh, you know, manage through these times. Thanks, Bert. Um, let's go ahead and dig in. I, I think one thing that's really front and center for everybody's mind is managing your remote team. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the most common challenges you're hearing? And you know, you manage a massive team yourself, right. so I know you can speak to this personally. But you know, what are you recommending small business owners do to to address those challenges? Yeah. So start with a, a little bit of a, a visual. So that 550 people that I have are centered in Austin, Texas and Nashville, Tennessee, and we're an inside sales organization. And for, for my organization specifically, we were in an office the entire time. We have very few up until the pandemic remote or um, work from home type uh, positions. So for us, it was an overnight transition, much like a lot of people in this interaction. And so the first thing that really stuck out to us um, was one, we didn't train, we didn't have a system for educating our leaders and our workforce to prepare for that. So, you know, we do things related to like disaster recovery and so forth that are short term, right? Say we have a, a small event, a snowstorm, or some reason we can't get in the office for the day. But for a long term sustained approach, we, we really hadn't necessarily designed and trained and planned for it. So we we're learning very quickly. Uh, in reference in, in using our own experience over the years to, and then gathering best practices, doing a lot of research and getting insights from external resources as quickly as possible to, to try our best and then hearing and learning uh, along the way. The very first thing that stood out to us was we, we do annual surveys for our employees and they were telling us for a really long time, they want a work from home option and environment. So we're constantly figuring out, well, how can we incorporate that? But then when the, you know, it turned on and we had it, uh, I think people quickly realized that in this environment to where there's additional stress factors, there's the element of the dynamics of the home, children at home, work, you know, the school, remote schooling, um, caring for loved ones and, you know, the pandemic scenario. The, the biggest one that really stuck out was the employee motivation became very challenging to keep them engaged, keep them inspired managing both their customers and what our core responsibilities are and all the responsibilities that they have in their own homes. Um, the, the volume of, of people that had friends or loved ones that lost their jobs. And it was just a volume of challenges, I think was overwhelming at first. And you have this element of, okay, a big shift to we're in this together. So how do we, as a, as a leadership team, support you know, everybody in our organization so that they feel that we're is there for them as much or more than our core responsibilities because our customers still need to be served. But our priority very quickly shifted to how do we help the employees feel um, supported from the work environment, from the technology, um, from the resources, because we were so dependent on that in-office environment for so long. And so, you know, in terms of the challenges, that, that was, probably stands out to be number one. The second was making sure we had the technology available for everyone to replicate at home what they have at the office. I, I overall employ quite a few college graduates and they work from apartments or condos. They may not have an office or a dedicated workspace. So how are we equipping them with the technology to replicate a comfortable workspace at home as effectively as they could so they could be focused on their job? And then I think on the, you know, on the customer side, it was making sure they didn't feel there was disruption. I mean, our customers specifically being small business owners and decision makers needed that support and guidance because they were going through major transition as well. So we needed our workforce to be that uh, support and that guidance and that advisor, knowing that they were managing their own challenges in their new home environment as well. Uh, and then on the opposite side, I think on the benefit, um, you know, when we get some things right, we, we really see some improved employee satisfaction. 
So showing how much of a caring organization we are to supporting them and advocating for them, um, you know, giving them the flexibility to manage their personal environment with the work environment has really helped in, in a lot of ways to, to have, you know, inspired employees that want to stay with us and, and have longer retention. Uh, and then on a personal note, you know, we're hearing things like I live in Nashville and, you know, I get over an hour a day back where I'm not sitting in traffic. And so my afternoon commute is, you know, a couple steps from the office to the living room or the kitchen with the kids. And so I think there's, you know, there's just that element from this new normal, you know, to a degree that's good on both ends. Those are really interesting points, Bert. And one thing that we're hearing a lot from people, and, and you really kind of touch on it there, is that people are kind of happy working at home to, to a degree, yeah. maybe not all the time, or right. maybe not while you're also homeschooling kids and, and all mm -hmm. the other stresses that we're dealing with. But do you, in the, in the surveys that we've done, about a third of small businesses said that they'll go back to full operating procedures after the pandemic is over. That's, that's just right. a third. Right. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think urban centers could look pretty different. I think mm -hmm. work is gonna look pretty different. Is that kind of what you're hearing as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think, what we're seeing in personal experience, you know, in the, in the, in the emphasis on employee safety um, and health, we're going to have a hybrid model for the foreseeable future. So, uh, you know, even when we do return, we're not going to go back to full capacity. We're going to make sure that we are redesigning the environment to have safe working distances and following the guidelines. And the, and the old model, our capacity plan was so that everyone was in the building in, in fairly close proximity. Well, we just can't do that anymore. And so we're definitely going to have a hybrid model. And I think, you know, on the small business customer side, it depends on your route to market and, and the way that you interact with your customers would probably influence which avenue you're going to take. Because I know so many small businesses emphasize uh, the experience that they provide, be it, you know, their product or service. And so if you lose the human interaction, being creative on how you can um, come up with solutions so that you can still add that value. And in some cases, what we're finding is it's a market opportunity. So as a small business owner, if you can identify how to capture that market share, you know, that your competition may have struggled with figuring out, you're able to gain those new customers. And when you do it right, you're going to keep them for a long time. And so we're seeing that pockets of success as well. Uh, but back on the work side, it's it's an evolution, right? We're as we get new information, as we work with and in, in research, you know, insights from the health experts. We really determine what we do with the employee uh, environment uh, when we do go back to the office. That's, that's really really good points, Bert. Um, you know how. I, and I think you kind of touched on this, but I, I want to yeah. get, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the tech sure. aspect of it. Okay. And, you know, how are workplaces going to change and, and what does that mean for the kinds of technology that we're going to be using? Yeah, I think um, if, you're, if you're in a hybrid environment, and I think about my own personal experience, well, when I'm in my home office, I have uh, my laptop, I have my docking station, I have my monitor, but I'm not going to want to load all that up into my car or truck and then take it to the office with me. So I think a couple of things are going to happen. One, um, I think we're going to see a larger transition from desktops to laptops. Over the past several years, desktop was the primary product in the small business environment because you worked from an on-site uh, office environment that was affordable technology, did everything you need, and you didn't need to take it with you. So we're seeing a major transition to laptop. I think solid state drives are very important because you're you're moving around your own home, you're moving back and forth, uh, transporting more common. So you need that, um, that, that reliability that that provides back to the accessories. So replicating that environment either at the office or at home. But I think there's a couple of things that really stand out that may be new to some. I think we're going to see a, a much larger adoption of cloud in the small business space. Uh, that way you have access no matter where you are be it not your home, be it at the office, be it another remote location. Um, I think we're going to see a, a much larger adoption of some form of cloud or hybrid cloud, depending on your, your technology. And the other is, you know, we need to make sure we're not cutting ourselves short on security. Um, because as you're accessing your company's information through, you know, in some cases, less secure avenues, be it public networks, et cetera, make sure you don't cut short there. You got to have the right security 
and, um, and ideally a safe way to store your customer's information. Because uh, we, we, we all know the horror stories of, of one bad security breach or loss of information, and then all your hard work is, in some cases, you never recover from. So I think those last three are ones that we definitely need to do a little bit of research on and make sure your company's set up for success in those. Those are really great points, and the the cybersecurity angle is something that we've been talking about quite a bit here. And it's, you know, a it's so so important, but it's also so so confusing, and it's really yes. hard to kind of wrap your head around it. So, um, I, you know, I know that NSBA and and our leadership we're very thankful the partnerships that we have with with folks like you guys at Dell mm -hmm. that that you know help us understand how that all works a little bit better. Um, I did want to talk about, um, you know, keeping employees connected also means keeping your team motivated and efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and we did get a question in um, yeah. uh, to this, to that effect. Okay. So maybe you can kind of talk about um, Patty's sure. question as well. But, you know, what tre trends are you seeing on that front, keeping people motivated, efficient, and accountable, which is a key piece? Mm -hmm. um, and, and what are some of the key tech solutions that, that you think can help with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with um, kind of my, my approach to, to management and, and back to, you know, fairly large organization in, in multiple cities. I have employees that are working from their home cities and states right now. So we have people all over the U.S. currently performing the job in this new kind of remote environment. And so what I'm really stressing with my leadership team is a very effective business management system. And if, if you're not familiar with what that is or what, if you don't have one, I encourage you to do a little research and implement it. And, and really all it is is an organized way that you are leading and managing your organization. So making sure that you have a schedule or routine to address what are the big four categories for me when, when leading the organization. And these are the, the true for, for Dell as a company. I'm gonna make sure that I'm emphasizing time with my employees, with my customers, hitting my financial targets. So back to that kind of level of accountability and then emphasizing how we grow and scale our business. And so within each of those buckets are going to be implemented various levels of technology, be it uh, data analytics to assess trends and in information about how I'm, my organization is performing uh, to give me the insights and diagnosis to make changes and, and implement, uh, you know, strategies and actions to improve. I think, you know, emphasizing at the beginning, the employee side, making sure that we've got good structure so that employees have that ongoing relationship with their leadership team. Because what we found early on is you can quickly over-index to performance, you know, uh, key performance indicators, uh, managing metrics, and that becomes the dominating conversation with your employees. And it becomes a really demotivating and distracting element for them. Um, and, and to a degree, kind of makes you go the wrong direction in what you're trying to accomplish. So my point there is make sure you have a structure and you're assessing and evaluating and getting feedback so that you're spending time in all of those buckets that are important to lead your organization successfully uh, with the right balance between the people, your customers hitting your targets and growing your business. So that, that really stands out to me. That's 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 really interesting. You know, one of the the things, if you could touch on just a little bit, uh, like sure. I referenced one of our questions from Patty. Um, I think Gruff is how you say it, uh, but forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. Um, you know, they were asking about timesheet integrity and okay. accountability, yep. and you know, mm -hmm. how do you marry those those things and making sure that employees are doing what they need to be doing, with also making sure you're not over um, data dumping your your employees, and and there's yes. a personal aspect to it. Right. I think that's if I, if I kind of look at my management system of the time and where and I look at the employee experience, that kind of falls in that category. So there's inspire and motivate where we're understanding, hey, we're on the same page with you know, personal life priorities, with work priorities. And then there's also uh, the elements of just what you said. So do you have in our case, uh, we have a team of people that does a reporting that that basically tells us our employees activity. So I have access to see the amount of time you are talking, for example, versus the amount of time you're not. And we have reports that read that out. And I also look at it as not a pick my battles, but I look at the extreme outliers. And so if we have alignment and we have an expectation setting around this is the schedule or the structure, 
then when we inspect it, if we see anomalies, uh, then we address accordingly. But what I try to make sure that we're doing, especially with our leaders who are managing the front line, is we got to make a connection on why we're driving the accountability to schedule adherence or why we're driving the accountability to the amount of activity. Because, I mean, it's, you know, all those things I talked about are big circles to where if we are losing 30 minutes or an hour of productivity across a lot of people, that compounds into performance challenges, which only increases the pressure and stress of getting back on track. And so for us, it's just ensuring that the agents really understand the connection between their day to day and their personal accountability and how that translates to the ability for your company to hit its goals, which then helps scale, grow, invest, reward, recognize. So it doesn't feel like it's just a call out or an individual um, over accountability at that one person and, and don't have a connection on what that means to the company's success overall. So I don't know, I'm not sure if that fully answers the question, but that's what's tough for us in that remote environment is if I'm the employee and I'm sitting at home, you know, versus if I'm on the team row with 15 other people, it's a very different feeling when it's addressed as a team versus a one-to-one. -one. And so that's where we're really working through the kind of that soft skills approach to balance it to where the accountability is, is much on the employee that feels responsible and, hey, I want to do well for these reasons and this is the benefit versus potentially, you know, constantly defending yourself or caught uh, in feeling somewhat attacked to a degree. Um, because I think that can easily be done when, when it's a one-to-one -one and you're in that kind of remote environment. Yes, I think that's such a good point too. And it really, it, it makes it, so much more challenging right now when things are constantly changing and you know Bert and Bert you and I both have small kids at home yeah. and we're, yeah. yours are a little bit bigger but um it, that that's really challenging it's constantly yeah. changing you yeah. know uh, uh, the work hours were available and and sure. the sound level and and right. I know that everybody on the line is dealing with that too and it's it's yeah. I think you know those soft skills are such an important thing to do but it's so challenging to do it right. um even on a zoom call which is a nice mm -hmm. conversation but it's just it's not the right. same as sitting down and having a cup of joe yeah, and, I, and I've uh, been working with my team a lot on the, the idea of flexible scheduling. So if we were traditionally, if your schedule is eight to five, we make something up or nine to six, just a regular day. Um, but, you know, I've got, I've got an eight-year-old, I've got an 11-year-old, and they've started their remote uh, school. And I've just got to build in blocks of time to where I'm completely disconnected from work to assist them, to help them, or to, as they go through transitions in their day. Well, so an eight to five may all of a sudden turn into seven to six, but it's still a standard work day. It's just I have additional breaks in there. And, and I'm encouraging my team to do the same and importantly, be very aligned. So back to that time card element, it may look very different right now. You may have more blocks or breaks as long as you're aligned with your leader and you know what to expect day to day and you have that, uh, that, that uh, agreement on that schedule. I think that you almost have to do that in some cases uh, because your traditional log in, log out, I just think is so different when it's your home office with everything else going on. Um, and then you, you take it a step further and say, I have more meetings now than I've ever had. You know, when I was in the, I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I, I feel like the volume of meetings has exponentially increased during the pandemic period. And so, yeah, I just get tired, right? It's it's hard. So I think it's really important to take those kind of mental refresh breaks and step outside, get some fresh air, be aligned with your leader or your employee and be on the same page and 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 then you just communicate um so you're so you you have the right expectations so that you're both aligned versus uh oh, where's Molly at again? I feel like Molly's not doing work because I don't see her online when I'm online. I think that's, I think this is all really, really, really good things for, for us to be thinking about both, you know, myself as an employee and, and all the, the employers who are on the line. Um, I, I want to take a little step away from managing sure. your team and, and talk a little bit more about how small businesses can, can connect better with their customers, with their community, sure. and, you know, what kind of technology tools are really making that possible now? Right. I think um, when I look at uh, the reason customers were we're calling and talking to us when this first started 
you could hear the panic in their voice uh, related to, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And there was this massive transition from face-to-face -face interactions to how am I going to do my business remote. And so, you know, back to buying the technology that empowers you to do that, be it the laptop and the, and the, and the replacement where you can work in a remote environment. And then it's understanding the, um, maybe you don't have a website and you need to be able to take um, orders online versus a brick and mortar or a retail store. I think, you know, another thing that really stands out is people using social media in a, in a much uh, more targeted way so that they can have the right reach to their customers when they're not capturing that sidewalk traffic or the traditional walk-in. Um, and so I think that one really stands out. And then in terms of, you know, getting your message out there, I think webinars like this are a huge benefit. I know like Megan on the team who, who works with the association, we were all face to face, right? We would normally have these on site in a, in a location with everybody in the same room together. And so I think small businesses can do the same thing where they can replicate information sessions or webinars uh, pre-recorded and then get that out there to uh, almost like marketing tools to bring awareness uh, to their product and services. So I, I think that's one. And in some cases, we're finding that you're getting a broader audience than you might have even realized you were getting in an on-site experience. Um, and so I, I think, you know, there's been some hesitation in some um, companies and, and industries to do that, but as they're adopting it, uh, it's becoming very successful. And the next piece is going to be, okay, well then how do you separate yourself from the competition? Because eventually everybody's going to be doing that. Uh, and now that we're kind of hunkering down this, the new normal for a long time, uh, now you got to figure out how do you refine your approach to, to stay top of mind with your customers, providing content and information and motivation for them to keep coming back. Uh, because you, you lose that luxury of what you were doing in your storefront or in your restaurant or whatever that environment was. So I, I don't think you got to overwhelm yourself with the technology. It's more of understanding the digital platforms that have your best opportunities to connect and replicate that personalized experience that you were, you know, founded your company most likely on when you first started. That's, uh, you know, you talked a lot about um, storefronts and, uh, you know, that, that feel you get when you walk into a, a small business that, you know, sells plants or whatever yeah. wonderful uh, business owners we have, sure. you, you know, retail has just been decimated and it's yeah. been so, so hard. So, you know, what are you hearing from small businesses and, and really focus on the retailer aspect of it, but the biggest concerns about them managing their teams and their technology right. in this, this new norm? Yeah, I'll start with the teams. What I'm hearing is really uh, indexed heavily on that employee motivation and engagement. Uh, I think that's been a struggle for some as those employees, again, back to balancing a lot of things and they're assessing, uh, not to be too harsh, but is it worth it, right? So you know, where, where do I spend my time and emphasize uh, you know, my bandwidth and my emotional uh, motivation to a degree? So that's where I go back to the role of the business owner and the leadership team to be inspiring and motivating and having those employees say, yes, I, I want to continue to do my best for, for Molly, for Bird, or for someone else, you know, despite the challenges. Um, and, and then on, you know, in terms of the, the, the route to market on the retail side, that one I think is really tough because it kind of goes back. If you created an environment that thrived dependent on people coming into your store, you have to really assess how do you recreate that in a digital format? And could that be through, you know, your most common be your social elements uh, and become very creative with how you attract users, um, be very creative with your marketing approach. Um, I think, you know, some people over index to sale, right? So I would be cautious around just a constant slashing prices type situation because I think, you, you know, you have great product and services, so you want to advocate that. Um, and then in terms of transacting, that's where you got to be very caught. It's very easy to collect payment. I would say do the research on, as I said earlier, collecting that payment securely and safely. So that way your customers trust that there's no concern with transacting with you in a digital environment uh, and you retain those customers that way. 
And then I'll say the last part to it is once you have that customer in, I'd really, really under, you know, take a look at your recontact strategy or your retention strategy. So, you know, maybe your face-to-face -face interaction was what wowed them and had them coming back. And if you lost that, now you need to wow them with your follow-up, right? How do you demonstrate them as a valued customer so that they keep coming back and thinking of you uh, instead of being lured in by maybe the next great idea or marketing, right? Uh, from, from a competition. So uh, I would say that's probably another area to consider is uh, emphasizing the, the retention and the development of your customers in the long, in the, in the, uh, in the ongoing interaction with them beyond just acquiring them on the first time. I, th I think that really leads nicely into the, the next thing I want you to, to talk about. Um, sure. And that, yeah, the, the, the follow up and, and really working with customers and realize that you're kind of handicapped if people can't come into your storefront. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, kind of thinking about business to business, um, mm -hmm. all, everybody's going to need the same kind of infrastructure. So, mm -hmm. you know, what can small businesses be doing to, to enhance their, their um, technology infrastructure to, to really thrive in this kind of remote setting? Yeah, I think, um, and so when I go through the basics of, you know, replicating a, an office setup, I think you have the elements that are going to be very consistent, right? Your core uh, computer, be it a, I, I suggest obviously a laptop given your environment, uh, the dock, your monitors, wireless keyboard mouse. Uh, I think, you know, another one would be similar to having a, a quality headset. For me, I use a, an adapter speaker. Um, so that I'm comfortable talking all day. And, and importantly for me is I spend a lot of time in my office. And so your employees are spending a great deal of time, you know, in this room. When I'm at, when I'm at the office, I walk around a lot. And so, you know, I'm, I'm interacting with employees. Well, now I'm replacing that with here. So I need a really comfortable environment and technology that works smoothly. So in terms of, you know, the, the part of it that's consistent, I think the building blocks are very consistent in terms of what the employees use kind of across the scale. But when you start talking about a hybrid environment and I'm going to and from the office, I would say, you know, connect with our advisors and make sure you have the technology that's kind of plug and play no matter where you are, where you have access to your company information, your customer's information, where it's very seamless and you don't have a different experience at one location versus another. Because if that starts happening and then you start putting preference on one versus the other, it could be disruptive to your ability to do business moving forward. And so that's where you start getting into the, back to the, the new technology related to cloud or a hybrid cloud, uh, where you have that access on demand no matter where you are. The ability to collaborate and, and work through shared documents with your employees in multiple locations, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's pretty... I say it's simple, but it's really not. And uh, but you know, once you get connected with the, the experts, they can make sure and make you feel very comfortable with making the right decision for your company's specific applications, number of employees, locations, type of data you deal with, uh, and they can figure out the ideal solution for you. That's great. And uh, you know, Bert, you kind of touch on the small the the advisors that that you all have at Dell, and I'd like yeah. you to talk a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, but I know that there's a lot of other things that that people can take advantage of um, that that Dell mm -hmm. has to offer. And yeah. you know, I, I'm sitting here working on a Dell laptop, and um, <laughs> uh, with all the all the stuff you talked about, minus yeah. that really cool speaker, which is yeah, we'll have to um, have to talk to leadership at NSBA about getting one of those, but. Um, talk a little bit more beyond all the great products that you guys have, but some of the other resources you have that, that can really help people yeah. at this time. Yeah, I, I think about, um, so I'll, I'll kind of go through a couple categories. The first one is, I know budgets are really tight right now. I know they're very uh, conscious of our capital and our cash versus uh, how we're investing. So I, I would encourage you to talk to an advisor about our Dell Financial Services and look at you know the Dell Business Credit, uh, we have leasing options. We have PC as a service. So if you wanted to um, uh, deploy multiple clients on kind of a subscription-based process, uh, we have a lot of options on how you're um, paying for your product that gives you the flexibility uh, potentially to help you expand your portfolio and, and then manage your, your on-hand cash a little bit different. So that's the first one that really stands out to me. The The second is uh, our services model. And so 
you know, more than ever, and, and I think every small business is probably in this category, you can't afford downtime. And so when I look at our pro support and pro support plus, um, we were just talking about having kids. My, my son typically is in the office on the other side of the desk from me, you know, doing his work or watching YouTube and he'll have a drink or he'll have food or something. And so pro support plus in these kind of unique environments gives you, you know, Hey, you have a spill, you have a, it falls and breaks, right? You have all the accidental protection as well so that you can be back up and running as quickly as possible and then not out additional money to have to replace it. And then, you know, additionally, the pro support plus has some um, advanced diagnostics that give you, you know, kind of a pre-wire if you're running into some issues. So instead of, you know, something completely failing, you would have a trigger to say, hey, FYI, you need to address this. And so again, it's all about ensuring that if you do encounter an issue, you have limited to no downtime. So you can continue to be as productive as possible in the environment. And then back to the advisor side, you know, a lot of times we think about a traditional, you know, uh, sales advisor, uh, and as a consultant, it's really a team of people. So when you connect with us, we have your primary advisor, but then I have a lot of specialists that are available to everyone um, at all times. So for example, if you need high-end enterprise infrastructure, we have technical sales specialists for that. We have complex solution specialists. You need uh, complex uh, software support. I really, every person that connects with us has access to a resource across a, the entire Dell portfolio. And that's available for free, right? There's no extra charge for that. And we're happy to provide that service to all of our customers. So, you know, it's that way when we look at the small business landscape, there's so many industries that our customers serve that um, the technology needs are just as broad. And that's why we have such a robust team of specialists to help everybody kind of across the board. And that's really interesting. I do want to, uh, uh, I, I don't want to make it sound like too hard of a pitch for, for Dell, but um, one of the colleagues I've worked with for many years, uh, a lovely person, terrible with technology, and the Dell team spent hours <laughs> kind of walking this person through some of the computer issues yeah. that they were having and, uh, you know, came to a great resolution, new laptop sent out. So uh, we have taken quite a bit of advantage, um, yeah. you know, as an organization. Sure. So, so you know, Bert's, Bert's not lying. They are there to help. And it's been yeah. um, quite helpful for us. And, um, and I see a question someone's asking about the, the, it was Pro Support Plus. It's the service available uh, to, to all of the systems that we sell in the small business portfolio. That's great. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there are any other questions. Let me check my email. I know that some people are sending stuff in that way. Um, I'm not seeing any right now. So, you know, we'll, we'll give folks back a little bit of, bit of time today. Bert, is there, are there any closing comments or, um, you know, last, last parting comments that, that people should be thinking about in the next month and potentially six months, potentially nine, you know, what, right. what should we be looking for? Yeah, I mean, the, the one that really stands out to me is I think it varies by region. Uh, I, I fall into this category to where when this all started in March and April, I was probably personally overly optimistic that we would be returning to normal much faster than we have. And so uh, I've, I've transitioned my point of view that, hey, this is going to be the new normal for, for a while. So I think, you know, as the small business uh, owners and, and employees that are attending or, or listening to this, uh, you know, please reach out to us. Please, you know, connect with us and let us figure out how we can help you uh, as you start making that transition to a new model that is, you know, that adapts to this new normal for the foreseeable future. Because we want everybody to be successful and, and uh, we really enjoy talking to everybody about their specific products, services, or companies. And, um, and don't hesitate to reach out. So. Uh, they got my contact information too, so they can reach me directly, and I can personally, you know, get some of my best advisors directly contacted with you or Megan. Um, but we love the community, we love the organization, and looking forward to hearing from everybody. Well, thanks, Bert, and and you did mention Megan, and and she's been on the line listening, and and we've been working with Megan for several years now, and everybody over the team at Dell has been um, really tremendous to work with, uh, and and you can access their information. Uh, you can either go through the the landing page that we have on our webpage, um, you just click on our resources or partners, and 
um, double pop right up there. Or, or you can go to uh, www.dell.com slash NSBA and that can also connect you with the, the various advisors and resources that they have there. So, you know, with that, I want to, um, you know, thank you, Bert, for, and the entire team there at Dell for being such great supporters of NSBA um, and of small business. Your support, especially in the last six months, has been extremely helpful and uh, for everybody listening, if, if you want to support businesses that support small business, um, Dell is a great place to start. Um, and I want to thank all of you on the line um, uh, for your input, your questions, and your time today. Uh, I will be posting a webcast of this webinar later today, so please check back um, nsba.biz. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We're at NSBA Advocate. And um, check out our COVID-19 resource page if you haven't yet. That's also accessible through our homepage. Um, we know things are weird. Uh, it, it is a new normal. It's not always the best kind of normal, but it, it, uh, it, it's where we are. So uh, we're, we're here to help. Um, Dell is here to help. Let us know what we can do. Uh, reach out to Bert, Megan, or myself, and um, uh, know that you're not alone. Uh, we know you're facing a lot of changes. A lot is still unknown these days, and uh, we're in this fight with you. So thanks, and uh, hang in there. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. Bye-bye.